Hi everyone, welcome to VMAC Education. In today's video, we are going to build a very simple Android application. And this project will be based on building a study app. All right. And let me give you a quick preview of uh, about the application that we're going to work on. So it will basically contain a welcome menu like this, a welcome screen. All right. Then you're going to have a sign up screen and then you're going to have a login screen. And we are going to have different designings and different color scheme for our application and you can modify it as per your own will and this is basically a demo for the like it is just an example of the contact manager app that we built previously here i have chosen dark indigo and this wallet color theme so for this new application we are going to have new themes so now let's go for go to the file let's go to new and then click on new project it's going to be an empty view screen and as you can see the ide is android studio and the language that we're going to use will be kotlin so as you can see here you have to click on the empty view screen don't go for empty activity as you can see this is the logo for jetpack compose and here we are just a bit trying to build our app in kotlin and xml all right so clicking on empty view screen let's take the name of our application I am like thinking to name it as IntelliLearn. All right, so API level, just keep it 24. If you want, you can keep it 21, but I'll just prefer it for the as recommended purpose. The name is IntelliLearn, the study app. All right, now click on finish. As you can see, this is the new window for our application. The Gradle project sync is a project that is, uh, it is in progress. That is all the dependencies and all the file settings that are like necessary in order to keep this app working are like in the sync and like that file is building up. All right, so this is the basic window. On the left hand side, you're going to have the directory of your application that is all the drawables, all the resources file and all the Java, Kotlin, XML files that actually help you to create your application are here in the left side. Here on the right side, we have various options. Here in this toolbar, so you can see this is the um, address of our particular file that is the main activity which opens by default and it is the activity that opens when you uh, start your application on your AVD or on your device. All right, so our main goal is first to build a welcome screen then that welcome screen will direct to the login screen and there you will also have a option for the sign up screen all right so first let's come to xml because this activity main.xml is the file where you are going to design your application basically we'll just say intel all right Here we are going to choose the linear layout because it will help you to design your application very easily. Here the orientation should be vertical because we don't want any horizontal screen here. All right. So here at the text view, let's give as an ID that is um, app name. All right. Here I've given it as IntelliLearn and we will remove these. All right, so let's start formatting our application as given. We are going to align it to the center so we have the gravity option. All right, we also have margin. We are going to keep as 15 dp. We have text size, which we will keep as 30 sp. All right. We can also use the font family. We will go to attributes with family. All right. So like here you have the pre-imported uh, font family. Basically, I don't prefer sans serif from my application. So I'll go to more fonts and I'll choose this as my font family. We'll go with family. We have font alata. Um, we can give it a color, text color as what do you say? Black. 
All right, so here we go. As I told you, I have done all the designing and imported all the drawables that are needed here. So for the simple stuff, you basically need to go to your folder and you need to copy that particular asset and then you can directly paste it here. Okay, like click on this app or screen, you'll get this. Like we have imported it. Okay, so like you have to import all of these here. I think it's looking pretty nice. Let us import an image here now image before the name and i'm taking logo of bmac okay here in the image view let's take it as wrap content wrap content okay so there's no change in it because this image is too big i'm giving it a default size as 5 400 400 dp is too big too let's try to reduce it okay so i think this is an ideally nice size let's give it a center alignment okay so i wanted like uh in the center of the screen okay so what i'll do i'll use margin we have top margin so i'll take it as DP only this much. So take it at 100 DP. I think it's nice. And then let's take it as margin bottom. Let's take it as 20 DP here. I think it's fine. For IntelliLearn, let's just let's just um, be the things here like this. Now for get started, we have this linear layout. We have to like shift it to the bottom of the screen so let us use the top margin again how much 60 dp let's make it 90 or like 121 Okay, so simply let's keep it here. Now let us decide the background for this application. So for this, I will go to this linear layout that is appearance linear layout. I'll go to background and here I will choose particular image. So what should we choose here? Here we have these screens. So I'm thinking we should go for this screen number two. So we'll type screen two. And here you can see what we are getting. Alright. And like here is something more that we can do with an application because here like mostly we have to do the formatting stuff. So what I was thinking, I should write here get started and like there should be a straight away button to say like click to get started. How will it sound? Right, so I'm, by that time I'm deleting this because like this doesn't go with the app. Let's take a button here, okay, so we'll make it grab content and text will be click here to get started, okay, gravity will be center and the background tint should be like we will have to choose a color code and Let's do it later. Alright, we have this. Let's take the font family as I have that. Padding as 10 dp. Okay, 10 dp is less. Let's make it a vertical padding of. When we go with horizontal padding, that is 20 dp. All right, and here we can also add another tagline. I'm going to do one thing just copy the text field, change the ID, then type. 
everybody. That's for me. Next is change the font size. Change the top margin because like it was too much. And here is the add the margin 20 dp. Alright, so I think it kinda looks nice. Alright. Okay, so here we have this simple welcome screen. And we can increase the size a little bit. And then shift it both upwards. You know, chromatic literally takes some time, so you can you know the one thing like have this in mind because uh, the main thing here is the functionality of the application that we are actually building okay so first let's do one thing let us define the color scheme for this particular app so that you don't get any problems when you do the designing so coming back to this project option go to res folder that is a resource folder now come to values in the values go for colors or xml file so we only have two colors defined for us so let us just pick up the color the main blue color theme there. all right so i have few color codes here so let us say color name let's make it indigo close the class here's the one for indigo you can see for another one let's keep it sky blue sky blue all right here we have the sky blue option and then let's take it as one thing with the blue. So, color name, blue, and this is the value. And like I have chosen this value from the place from where I actually designed the assets. And you can go and do the same. Okay, is it different? Let me check it. The value didn't change, so here we have a new one. All right, let us define one more color here. Name should be gray, and let us choose the color values for gray. will be this Thank you. Okay. I hope these things should work fine. Now coming to main activity to like some and here I'm gonna change the color and that is background tint and let's go for indigo okay indigo is like this or if you go for sky blue, it's like this. And if you go for simple blue, it's like this. So I think we should go for indigo. All right, and let's just increase the font size. Okay, perfect. Now, what we basically want, we have simply designed the main screen of our application. Now, what we want in this video, we are going to cover up designing and like coding and implementing the functionality of the sign up and the login page. So, come to new, go to activity, select the empty views activity, select this app, login. All right, and then create one more, go to activity. Okay, here we go. So I'm coming to main uh, XML. What I basically want on clicking this button, it should actually redirect me to the login screen. And
person is asleep in his bed. Now, you will go to mainactivity.kt because it is the Kotlin file associated with this XML file. And it like this context, uh, this attribute defines that this main activity is connected to this. And this line set content to your r.layout and activity main defines that this Kotlin screen is connected with this. Okay, so and under this one create function, we have to create that basic migration. So here we have the ID as get started button. All right, so we have kept, kept the ID as get started button. Here you will go and here you will choose value get started btn equal to find you by ID here we have button. And here we have r dot id dot get started button. Okay, so then it shows red that is here you want to click for the error and it says that you have to import this particular view here. Okay, so what we basically want when you click the get started button, it should show you that all the things like you have to basically move to the login screen. Okay, so when you migrate. From when you want to migrate from one screen to another, there's a concept named intents. Okay, and it's going to be the external intent here. So it's going to work like this intent equal to intent. We have this. Then there's a file link that is we want to move to login dot class. So we have Java. Okay, and then there's start activity. This is the current intent. Coming to this alt enter and it's completely fine here. Wait, okay, so here's like there's some changes to the code. Connect these two columns here and class called Java. Okay, and here you have to import this intent so that it can work nicely. All right. I will show you the preview of this particular application in the login.xml. What do we have? Let's just write something here. Till then, we should import a text view and a button. Button should say login button. All right, like this is for the demo to show you that we have actually migrated from the first screen to the another. Going to be login button. So into your account. All right. We ain't bothering it right now because this is just for your demo. So let's go back to activity.kitty. We are going to have an application like I'm using external device here. I'm clicking on this. Okay, so Brad is actually building and in order to see that your app doesn't have any errors, you should go for log cat panel where you can actually find if there are some errors in your application. So currently our Gradle file is building up. For the next task, we are going to basically build the login screen for this application and this login screen will be connected to Firebase. And it was it's going to use Firebase authentication to verify if only the registered user are trying to log in. And for the next screen, we have the sign-up screen. That is, the new user will be able to create their new account. All right. So this might not be common in the study applications, but since I have to explain the functionality of the app, this will be a good example for the same. So our app is working and here we have this image, here we have the text and when you click on the screen, you can see the login screen has just opened up. So here we can see that our app is working fine until now. So let's start building a login screen and then we'll move to building the sign up screen. Okay. 
all right so let's first code the xml file for this okay and since i showed you how this constraint layout was working so it's best to go with linear layout taking this linear layout okay now here we have to select the orientation that is going to be vertical now here what you have to do you have to take in email and the password from the user so let us type your input here you have text input and put it below this so you can see it's code that appears here it's the text input layout all right let's keep it as lab content okay now for this keep the hint as email lab content family as a lot of text size as 18 SP. All right, keep it 16. Okay, so if you can still write for it, then you can write as much as it is. All right, so in this token screen, basically, we want some drawables on the left. Okay, so come to the resource few options may sound like irrelevant to you or like you may think that you don't want so much design instead it's all up to you but i really prefer that you have to be doing design so let's go for some email i'm like going to put an email icon here all right and for the password i'm going to use a log icon because yeah the password should be encrypted We have imported these two icons now let us use them here so for um, using the kinds of icon you should use a drawable okay and text cursor drawable we have You can use drawable left or you can use drawable yeah just go for drawable left all right and there's a lot of oh you can see that there's not much space between these two so then you can go for drawable padding make it as 20 dp if you want or you can use 16 i think it's fine all right Similarly, here you can also use an ID that like ID is pretty much important for the application. So it as ID, email, text, view. Okay, so it works until now. We have worked on the font, we have worked on this. So now let us try to do some margin 20 dp and padding. And you go. It looks nice here. So let's copy it. You can also like you can search here input and you can use text input and you can copy paste with it, put it there. But I'll just simply copy it and then make some changes in itself. I'll do password. Password text view. Alright, and here we have it. And let us just reduce the margin a little bit. Okay, then, there. And for the width, I think this width is fine. And if you want to modify the width, you can go for 300 dp. All right. Let's also make it 300 dp because we don't want the longer screens. 
one more thing you can do that since it's about the input for the input, you can see uh, input attribute as well. That is input type, it's going to be text email address here, and in this case, it's going to be input, input type as text password. All right, and here we have this button which is going to have some padding of 20 dp. Let's make this padding as horizontal. Vertical to 20 dp or 15 dp. All right, so what I now basically want, I will apply some background to this, okay? And what I'll do, I want to keep them centrally aligned and the sign into your account. I have to modify this too. So for this case, go to family. You know, these steps are pretty much repeated. And at a point, you may also feel infuriated or bored. So, like, you will have to do the signing for the same topics. Why do this? And they give it nicer. Okay, so I'll try to come to this and I'll press gravity. Simple. So let's see if it works. Alright, perfect. So here we have this like if we put this center option, so it completely puts it side here, like also vertically and horizontally. So let's try to put some background and coming to resource manager folder. What background would I like to put here? Let us try the screen one and see if it looks nice. Background screen one. Yeah, it, it looks nice. So for the login, let us change the color. I think it's background tint here. There's a difference between background and background tint because it was for the color based backgrounds and your Uh, background is for the image based backgrounds. Size 18 plus 10. Okay, this looks nice. Okay. This is a margin thing here. Let's go for it. Okay, I think it looks nice. So now coming to the login.kt because now the main part begins here. So what I really want that on taking the login, it should redirect to the dashboard screen. So let's just first create an empty dashboard screen here. Come to the folder of Java, new, go to activity, come to empty views activity and select dashboard. There we go. So we have dashboard.kt here ready with us. Now let's try to uh, port login.kt. Okay, so this is our login screen. Now what we are going to do, we are going to use Firebase for this purpose because basically Firebase is a real-time database and it has a lot of features such as authentication. You can try to log in with uh, other accounts such as your email, your phone number, and also your Google or social media accounts. All right. So, uh, the, you know, the steps are very simple. You have to go to tools, you have to go to Firebase, and okay, and here what we want, we basically want authentication. All right, so to authentication, we want custom authentication system. Let's go to Kotlin. First, let's connect to your Firebase, and here the Firebase console opens up. So I have this project for IntelliLearn ready with me. I'll just click it. Okay. This is what you basically have to do. It shows that it's being connected to your app now. Connect. 
so it has been connected now coming to it you have to add firebase authentication to your app because like this is very much important guys like i told you that the gradle file contains all the dependencies about uh, the, the implementations that are going to be there present in the app so this is pretty much important that you can see that gradle is actually configuring the project now here you also have some examples on how you can basically use it so you can take the use of these steps because these work really all right they really work all right and we can simply copy these steps to if you really want to but as before that we we should type the steps here okay so your gradle is building and it should show connected to ensure that this step has been done and if we come to our screen let's come to firebase all right just google firebase click on firebase console and your firebase just opens up you can log in with your google account and it will be very helpful okay so this is intelliloan just open it and on the right side you know like there are so many products if you go to all products you can say you have five store you have extensions you have ml functions hosting so this is for you to explore so basically two things that we'll do, be doing is authentication and real-time database so under authentication all right so it's done now what we basically have to do since the dependencies have been added and it has been connected to our firebase uh, also so now let's come to the login screen okay so let us start building this so first of all since we have you know, firebase authentication so we have to import few things so let us just initialize later as well we are going to use firebase authentication so let's Firebase Ops. Okay. We also have like email and password here, so we are going to initialize it. For this so we're going to put email and its type was let's go to this. What was the type? It was text input layout. Alright. So text input layout here is going to say that you have to import this. Okay, imported. Similarly for the password so for text input input all right so these are our um, predefined variables we can do the same for our button also for the login button and i hope we have given it the id of login button all right so coming to login kt again let us make it create an it for now login btn so what we have to do since we have initialized these variables we have to assign them the values that you have to go to this particular view and fetch it so first is the input email it is equal to find view by id and it's going to be added id dot email email text view and for the input password it's going to be find view id and id dot password text view okay and for the button it's going to be login button it's going to be find view by id r dot id dot login button cool so what basically happens when you enter your email and password here and when you click on login so the authentication process begins and if your credentials are correct then you're given the login otherwise you it just says that the password or the email is incorrect try again okay so let's just start that step here so first of all we're going to initialize the firebase also here because it's like very much important to get by this one. Get instance. I think that's correct. I should be acting here. So, what basically get instance does, let's see what's the error. Okay, so we have to use firebase alt dot get instance. So, what it does, 
the Firebase auth.get instance actually fetches the Firebase uh, project which is being connected to your app. Okay, so now we have to set the click listener for our login button. So set on click listeners. Now here what we have to do. First thing first, you have to take in the data from these two values which are present that is your email and password so it's going to be val email equal to input email dot to string sorry it's going to be text dot to string all right so what it does text basically fetches then you will continue with password which is equal to password dot text dot string. Alright. So here is going to be text input edit text. This error has been found. Okay, so get text is basically the function that helps you fetch the data from the particular uh, view and to string basically converts those values into the string so that we can perform the operations on the fetching. So I don't think that we have any here until now. Let's just see. Okay, unused input has been reused. All right, so let us get started with this so first of all we have to create the test cases that if the email and password is empty then the, there should be a message saying that your email or password is empty or incorrect oh, sorry it, it is empty all right so it's going to be if email is empty you can see the button or password is empty then what it's going to do it will display a message that is toast or no text this is enter email and password okay and toast the length of the toast should be Short. Okay, and then it will show. So it will show you uh, a small toast if your input credentials are not present. So if they are present, so we want the Firebase to actually authenticate the user if the details are correct or not. So, okay, so how it goes? We have initialized the Firebase auth here. We have given it the value, so we are going to use Firebase. Okay, then click on sign in with email and password. All right, this is very much important, and I will tell you that how you are going to set up that email and password later. Okay, so inside this, you have to you can see the suggestions that we have to enter the email and then the password as the string. Here. Okay, we are done. So when this happens, we have to set a complete listener that is like whenever the sign in occurs, you have to do this okay so we are going to do add you can see the options available here on complete listener okay it goes like this so what is going to do when the sign in is properly done with email and password we have to move it to the next dashboard screen right so here is it so here you can see the suggestion it's saying the task auth results so we are going to create write task like this and then if you're going to write if task is successful that is uh, if the sign in is completely successful then what is going to happen so here what we are going to do we are going to move to the dashboard screen all right so it's going to be val intent equal to intent i told you in the previous screen also that what is basically intent we are going to have dashboard Start Java, then start activity, then start intent, 
and for the above intent just press alt and enter and import this all right we have imported this okay so what basically happens if the authentication is correct then it moves to the next screen but what happens if the task failed so for the else part you can do your own research if you want to show that login button continues so you can write the same like for example i will just write here closed invalid email or password all right okay so we have to write this first because the context is important then there is a message or the character then there is post dot length short then we have short. all right so can we see any errors here these are the new simple directive so let it let it be because it doesn't cause any much trouble to us but uh, now now coming to your firebase okay so for this firebase authentication what basically happens is that when you sign up or when you create a new account the details will appear like this but since we have not designed the sign up screen i really want you to authenticate in your own way okay so here we're going to add a user and let us take an email as we have an email let's take it as person one two three four five at hostgmail.com and the password as one two three four five six because in firebase it's pretty much important that you keep the passwords uh, like at least of six characters otherwise it shows you an exception okay so we have this credential down here it's not verified we're not adding the email verification process but it can be done as if you go to the sign in screen and when you if you like do something with the settings address verifications so and so like everything can be done in this case okay so coming here i will run this app on my device going on the top we are going to run this app and do one thing just uh, turn the networks on for your device because the login always appears online Okay, before that, you can do one more thing. You can go to manifest file and you can enable the settings for internet. So you will have to use this permission. Okay, just type internet. Um, it's very pretty simple. Like we don't want to avoid any troubles for our application. It's going to be like. Let's see if it runs. So it is launching. App has been launched. We click on click to get started, and it shows the, the sign in screen. So the email was person one two three four one five at the gmail dot com, and then the password was three four five six. All right. Click to okay. Click on login. It has moved to the dashboard screen. All right. Now let's try with some invalid credential. I'm taking some other account. Like let it be emac at gmail.com and the password be one two three four five six. Okay. I try to log in. It says email or oh, invalid email or password. So I hope this is understood that how the authentication works. So congratulations, you have completed half of this project right now. So what else is left? Now we have to redesign we have to design and we have to write the functions for the sign up screen. Now come back to the login screen and you must have seen in most of the applications you have the log a sign up button down there. Okay, so without wasting any time let uh, let us just create it because the app is like going on pretty nicely you know so let us go for some 
of horizontal text view first. That is the linear layout because I first want to click here to get started, then on the right of it, I want to sign up. Okay, then we have a text view and then we have a button inside of it. Okay, so coming to this text view, let's keep it as wrap content. Wrap content. Okay, the orientation is horizontal. Or you can actually match the width with that squirrel. Okay, but like if you don't understand it in the beginning, so I would definitely recommend that you should keep it as that. Too. So using some padding, let's use horizontal padding. I want it as 30 dB. All right. Margin, we'll just use it later. So for this, it's kind of text. Don't have no Sign up. Okay. Alright. The background thing is gonna be indigo too. Or I should like lighten it. I should use simple. I'm thinking I should go with white and I should put the color. As indigo. No, that idea was like really bad. And they go here. Okay. Padding should be in DP. Let's just reduce it to 5 DP here. This is the bare minimum. Now come into this text. Size should be 16 DP. Academy should be a lot of Here also. Now let's just use some gravity. We will have to make some changes.
All right, so, so far we have designed this particular screen. You can do the formatting as per your wish later on. So let us do the functionality of sign up button. Coming back to login.kt and here, let's minimize it. Login button. Now comes your sign up button for which you will have to write sign up button equal to sign you by ID equals button and sign ID dot sign right here to write wow okay here you are going to import it So this is another way here we had pre-initialized these variables because I knew uh, we knew that they are going to be used later on but here we have initialized it inside this particular on create function now adding the on click listener set on click listener then we have this intent this we have to move to sign up Okay, last on Java, start activity, we have intent. And we know this code is correct, so it's definitely going to work. And now let's come to, okay, we have one more, okay, right. So now let's come to the sign up.xml and we have to do designing for the same. Here I would recommend you to watch the steps given in the previous login section and follow it to do the same because I, I'm going to just fast forward this video for this part.
Okay, so here we have actually created the side of screen. As you can clearly see it, now let's come to our signup.kt file, which will help us to basically create the signup code for this thing. Now, again, here we have Firebase Authenticator, so we don't have to worry about it. And this is the last thing that we're going to do today. So let me close the previous windows, which are not going to be in our use. Coming to the so, initializing few variables that is the four entries that we have created. One name for this text. Say yeah, it's going to be user name or the text. So these four are actually uh, the four fields which are going to be used in the sign up. All right. Okay, so these have to be initialized before this on create. I couldn't see you. Okay, so here we go. Now inside it, we have to actually assign values to these. All right, so user name for the text is going to be find ID. Do we have any username here? Username text here we have. Username text here. Similarly for email edit text, we have only with our ID or dot ID. Email text here. There you're going to create a new like you're going to write code for sign up login button and one will be for your uh, firebase that's going to connect to the real uh, database all right so let's just create Just keep in mind that I don't make any spelling mistakes. Um, this has been done. We need one for Firebase. So, Firebase of like we had earlier. So, Firebase of get instance. Alright. Do we have this login button? Let us check it again. We have beautiful. Okay, so you have to keep these things in mind when you are working on this application. So now let's connect. So first things first, when you click on sign up button, set on click listener, 
Here we have to search the text. All right, so it's the username that is username as a text of text and close friends. Yeah, email. Let's write the correct name. Alright, so we have actually stored the data here. Now, what will actually happen? That first, we are going to test that the confirm password and the password is actually working. Okay, so when you fill on these details, you write sign up if the passwords do not match. So you have to write password don't match and the second condition should be that all the fields should have the value but none of the fields should be empty all right so let's just create the uh, conditions for these two conditions and then if the, all these conditions satisfy then you have to switch to the firebase real-time database to store all the data all right so condition number one is username is empty or Email is empty or password is empty or the confirm is empty. Then what will happen? There will be a toast make text this or fill in. the fields first of make text sorry not post of it should be length short then you have to store alright now for the second condition let's just read another if that is if confirm is not equal to password then your toast is going to be or you can simply write else if toast make first this the passwords do not match then short capture all right and if all these conditions satisfy then you actually have to redirect it to the real-time database to store the email you and username of that particular person all right and what you can actually do is you can also use the firebase authentication to store the data inside your firebase authentication so that you can next time you log in you can use the credentials that you used for sign up all right there is one more condition that we can actually apply for that is the password length should not be less than six like i told you earlier because in firebase there is an exception if the fi uh, given password is like having less than than six characters else if password is dot length more than six okay so it's going to be toast make text this the password should be at least six characters long. Okay. Simply post short length. You can leave a long length, but it's all to you. Open it to else, and here we have to start coding our stuff. Okay, so it's going to be file based on dot create user with email and password like we did earlier. That is you have to fetch the email and password and you have to create the user. All right, and set on complete listener. Sorry, add on complete listener it is. Okay, so here we have to write the task. 
Now, if the task is successful, task not is successful, that is you were able to create, like you were able to authorize these email and password uh, in your file of authentication, that what actually happens is that you are going to store this data in the real-time database, all right? And before actually proceeding this step, let us create the real-time database for the same. All right, so this is our project overview coming to the real-time database. And if you haven't like initialized the database or if you haven't worked with the Firebase before, so you can go to rules first and you should edit the rules. All right. And you should set it to true true because the initial values are false because Firebase doesn't allow you to set your data public because it can be easily stolen or modified as given here in the warning. So coming back to the data, once you have modified the rules, just don't forget this step. Now come to the data. Now, Actually, the real-time database is actually the NoSQL database. That is, the values are going to be stored in the form of um, objects, that is, keys and values. And if you want to, like, store it into your system, so it's going to be in the form of a JSON file. All right. And, like, these databases are very common because they can be updated real-time. And SQL databases may sound complex in some of the functionalities, but, like, these databases are easy to implement once you understand the concepts. All right, so this is the URL which has been connected. We have to click on the plus icon, so we create a uh, key and value. So initially, the name of the database is going to be users, okay? And then we click on add. So let's just create a sample database value. So users is our database. And for the value, I will use this plus icon. I want the name of the username should be test user and under that my username is going to be test user okay and in the test user the email this can be test user at gmail.com so let me tell you how this actually works this way all right so this is your database here we have chosen this users value because you can take users as your database. Now, inside users, test user is the first registered user, which is going to be identified as by its unique username. So, inside the uh, particular registered user, we want to store two values, that is the email and the username. That is actually being used in our application down here. You can see. And we are not actually going to store the passwords or uh, anything else because, you know, this is pretty illegal when you are... Uh, building some applications so it's good that you store only email or username okay and there can be one more thing if you don't want to keep this test user as your id then we can have some more option for this because there are two aspects of working on the database and listen it very carefully one thing that you only want the sign up screen to store the database directly like to store the data directly here so that um uh, like uh just as a storage, okay? And the second aspect can be that the sign-up screen actually works like the sign-up screen that we use in most of our applications. Your credentials get stored here. So the next time you log in, it says, hello, and your username, it could be test user or XYZ. And so in that case, what actually happens that in uh, your data gets into this authentication system first, that is the email and the password is used to generate uh, and add a user for the authentication. And with the help of this user UID, that is pretty unique for each and every user, this user UID is actually used as a particular key for the real-time database for that particular user. Okay, so if you uh, take an example, if you log in via person 12345, if you have signed up with this user or you created a new account, suppose person number two, you use this email, you use the new password, you created it, it's going to give you user UID. So this is the task of your sign-up screen. Okay, so next time you log in, what it actually wants to do is the data will be fetched from here and when it moves to the dashboard screen, it will directly move to the real-time database and with the help of that particular unique ID, it's going to fetch for that particular user and then boom, it's going to show the data as for the, da uh, the user credentials present here. All right, and it can be done in the case of storing the user's data or their name or their details. All right, so this is how it goes. So 
I will tell you both the ways that how you can store the data, but the one which actually integrates authentication and real-time database is going to be our main target for today's video. All right, so coming back to signup.kt, here we have done this, right? We have created our database, so now let's just hold it. So we are going to we have the value of Firebase authentication, right? That is Firebase auth, and we have like set the uh, instance also. Okay, so now we have to take and store the value of the database in the particular variable. So let's just take val database. You will use Firebase databases because all this authentication and databases for your real time database get instance and what it does it actually takes in the instance there okay so we have to import this it should be the same i really hoping this firebase database we will handle it okay add a dependency see the first option for the database there are new dependencies that you can actually use okay so it is actually importing it we can do one more thing if we can go to tools we can go to firebase okay just to make it more easier and select here real-time database so that it basically supports everything okay so we'll go to tools we'll go to firebase and we'll add this real-time database sdk to our application so that we don't have to import it one by one and there's like two or three lines of code which will be updated in our gradle file All right, so the, your Gradle is in sync right now. I hope it has been added, otherwise we'll have to come back to it again. All right, so without wasting any time, we have like set the instance for our database. Now we want the reference, that is uh, the reference that we used here is the users that we created. Okay, so it's going to be uh, DB ref, that is DB reference, that's going to be database reference dot file it's going to be users okay now coming to the user id because inside user we have to create a particular key for the user so that all the tickets can be stored inside that key that is you can say object inside an object if you if you like it oops very much so user id we have it then we go for file this part which says current user all right then there's question mark uid question mark dot this so basically this is kind of like complex like not so complex but let me tell you what it does like i told you when you authenticate like when you create an account inside your address authentication we have an email and a password so you have the specific uid and that uid is actually going to be uh like integrated with your real-time database and it will add as a link between your authentication and your real-time database storage okay so we have this user id and data is going to be user then username name sorry username and email all right so now what is this user what we actually doing is we have this user id but now we want to store the data that is username equal to so and so email equal to so and so so we have to create a kind of array or you can say a class for it right so here we have the same for the user and we are going to create a data class here in this case all right so here is, is where this particular app ends so let us create data class User. The value is going to be val is equals to your username, this is string, and then we have value as your email, this is again string. All right, and Here we go. You can do the whole thing like you can go to project and then you can right click and then you can create a new file. But you know, that's not you shouldn't do it. But the, like you can do it, but oh, this is more easier way because like you only know that you only have to add one line of code and that to the same file. All right, so our data has been stored up here. Now, what we want to do is we want to push this data 
with respect to the user ID and user ID will be pushed inside your DB reference. All right. So how it goes is that value user reference is equal to DB reference dot file that is your user ID and then user reference ID that is underscore user reference is going to set the value as per data. All right, and if it's done, it's going to show the make x as this sign up successful. It's going to be length. Start show. Okay, and if the task is not successful, then you really can give source as. Make text this sign up fail try again. Okay, so it is this unused directive. Fix the start here. Login button is never used. All right, so let us add one more for our login button also. So the code for login button is very easy. I hope you must have like the memory get right now. Set on click listener. Here we have this intent equal to intent. Then go for its login dot slash dot shama. Then we have start activity intent all right then you have to import this intent set. i think it's looking pretty nice so do we have any major errors here we have unused import so let's delete it so now we are going to run this particular app in our phones As you can see, the dragon is working, and let's hope that this app shouldn't fail. Meanwhile, you can keep your log cat section open and you can find out if there are any kind of errors that can be found in this application. This is really taking a lot of time. So, like, if there's one advice to you, if your app really takes a lot of time to build, you can do one thing. You can actually go here and you can clean the project, or you can go to file and invalidate the cache, and then you can restart the project. But, like, don't forget to save it. Okay, so our app is actually working on the device. We click on click here to get started. Let's go to sign up. So, seems to be pretty beautiful. Let's create an email and I will choose my email as student bmac at gmail.com. Bmac student Okay, password we can keep it as one, two, three, four, five, six. I know it's not a safe password, but you should keep it as same. Now we will test one more thing here. Uh, for confirm password, I will go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now go for sign up, it shows me passwords not matched. All right. So if I keep one of the fields as empty, now let's see what the message occurs. Fill in the required details. So I fill one, two, three, four, five, six. I click on sign up. Your sign up it has been successful. Okay, so let us try to sign in and then we will move to the database where it shows that our sign up has been successful. So you can see that here when we refresh it. And my email was student VMAC and password was one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now try to log in. See, I have been successfully logged in here. 
and this is actually our dashboard which is it has not been designed but we will design it in our next video so let me give you a quick structure of our app here so this user was created by us this is the user id this is the email this is the username which has been registered and coming to the authentication here we have student vmac and you can see the user id here was similar to that one there so that's all for today's video in this video as a summary let me tell you we actually created an android application which has a welcome screen which has a login screen and which also has a sign up screen here we have used the firewall authentication and real-time database for the connectivity and all the data can be stored inside the database and authentication can be used to only allow the registered user to use the application go to the dashboard in the next video we are going to create and design our dashboard section where we will actually help users uh, to build an app uh, which will help them in their studies okay so we will talk about the features in the next video so till then uh, just uh, stay connected if you enjoyed the video just give it a like because it takes a lot of efforts to come out with these long project ideas and with these long videos and make sure you subscribe to stay tuned with the new videos that we upload regularly in our channel thank you so much and we'll see you in the next class